characters in the stories are kind of universal. They're kind of archetypical char uh, characters, and they're kind of uh, universal stories. So where it took place didn't really matter much. It could go anywhere. And these characters in these stories, they really, they could be in Greece, they could be in China, they could be in uh, Sweden. They just, it, I decided to put it in Saskatchewan because that's what I knew and it had a little flavor to it, you know, the flavor that I knew. My name is Brent Buss. This is called Doug River. And Brent's going to be here. And uh, how would you like to... The camera on. Is the uh, microphone on? That's all there is to it. The people that I grew up with, you know, when we sat around the coffee shop, even when I was a little kid listening to them talk, they, it's really dialogue driven. They really put a lot of thought into their words and they, it's, it's like 80 wordsmiths sitting around a little coffee shop and it's, you know, it's fascinating to listen to. They find great ways to phrase things, original ways to phrase things and say things. And so that's kind of a little bit of the flavor that I wanted to bring to the to this show. It's Nancy Lee Robertson. Two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes. What is with you and this camera? You have to get that lamp. <laughs> oh, sorry, was I being a smartass again? Oh, if I could play any other character in the show. Uh, probably Brent Butt. So I could be the boss of everything and tell everybody what to do. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Nancy Robertson. I used to be on Brett Butt's show. You best get me while I'm going. Eric Peterson. As third base coach, my first order of business is to go to the liquor store for supplies. I don't think I've ever had such a strong response to a character. I mean, in the sense of my, I said, you know, this is where I'm from, I know this guy inside out, and I have to g play it. I have to be be the character that, I mean, the actor that does this. I don't know what I would have done if I hadn't. My name is Gabrielle Miller, and I play Lacey. Hey, Oscar. I hadn't gotten the chance to, to read or do a lot of comedy in Canada, at least in Vancouver. And so when I got it, I was very, very happy. Every week, I have a new favorite character. I think I'd like to play Wanda this week. Hi, um, I'm Nancy Robertson and I play Wanda Dollar on the, the screen. And earlier in the interview I had stated that when asked what other character w would you like to play and I said, like a fool, Brent Butt, but, uh, or Brent Leroy, but what I meant was uh, Lacey Burroughs played by the lovely Gabe Miller because she's the one I'd really like to play because she's beautiful. <laughs> She's beautiful. Oh, there's a lot of infighting and politics. And no, you know what? It's, it's basically a really great big family. My name is uh, Fred Awanek. He's sort of a semi bringing in his groceries here. Doing something? Yes. Where is my inner Hank? I sit in my trailer every day. Where are you, inner Hank? I don't know. Oh, no, it's pretty easy. The, the writing's pretty good, so I just do what they tell me. Say this, I'm a puppet. Hey, say that, okay. Oh, it's funny, all right. <laughs> Welcome to the set of corner gas. I'm picking McPigerson. Pay no attention to the backside. Come on now, don't get me in. Do we really have to go? Yeah. Oh, but I'm talking to my new friends. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Janet Wright, and I play, I just did it, Emma. What's my name? Leroy. Leroy. <laughs> <laughs> I think it would be fun for the industry, because we've got to turn it around, for someone like me to play Lacey. <laughs> the little girly girl voice. And, um, we need to change all this around. My name is Tara Spencer Nairn. I think that I am a little anal retentive in some ways, so I just take out the extremes in, Karen, uh, in myself and put them into Karen, so like the anal retentive perfectionist, but also um, the goof, like the little girl who's um, trying to convince everyone that she's, she's a bit more mature and, and you can trust her and, and, and that she is a hard worker when really I'm, I'm just an idiot. But um, yeah, I just try and bring the extremes in my own personality, I think. Okay, fine, the reality is I'm just a goof. 
Uh, name's Lauren Cardinal. They told and, uh, <laughs> coming around on Lauren. Shut up. Tara Spencer Nairn is crazy. She's insane, and um, she's such fun to, to be with, to work with. And um, uh, lucky that that her and I got paired up because we just have this. We have fun together, so it's so it's great. It's one of those things you look forward to work. I think a, a lot of the people aren't identified in, in the success of this show. Without the crew that we got and the and the support staff, our production office, uh, camera department, every department is has done has gone far and beyond. And without them, <laughs> I wouldn't look this good. Six people to make me look like this. I just can't think of better people to work for and with. Um, and I feel that's the kind of relationship that we have. We work with together, for each other, um, all the way through the process. Um, they're divine individuals. Here we go, ready and action. I laid eyes on Brent Butt about, uh, I guess about 10 years ago. We are doing um, an episode for a TV series on another network. I don't know if I should mention the name of that network. Uh, and uh, he was the star of that of one of the episodes, and he and I actually came to Regina and shot that episode here in Regina. I don't know. I wish I could put my finger on it, because then I would just do it again with a hundred TV series and be like a crazy Ted Turner billionaire. Chilly. Chilly at around 6 p.m. You don't want to be on the set. We're a pretty gassy group, actually. There's always fluffs. What puts the gas in corner gas? Brent Butt. <laughs> I think it's because everywhere we go, there's a lot of Canadians who come from smaller centers and they move to bigger centers. What does put the gas? I'm, I don't know. They get like a little twinge of home or, or something familiar that they identify with. Everybody involved has a bit of gas. This sounds kind of pretentious, whatever. But everyone's a different musical instrument and it makes a really good like jazz band. Like nobody's the, nobody's the same. I think the main thing is that people for whatever reason are able to relate to the uh, to the characters that's a big part of it if you're watching something and you and you actually give a hoot give a rat's patoot about what the characters are doing that goes a long way and so if you have the story and the characters that people somehow relate to that's it that's eight tenths of it and then the other two tenths is to try your best to be hilarious plus the writing you don't get writing like that ever i don't think ever no, it's very well written. That's the gas in it. The story department of this show is a top drawer, and I like to be able to I get ideas for shows or uh, story things, and then you kind of just hand it to them, hammer this out. Brent was always a good joke writer, and I think I was always a pretty good joke writer, so I think as you try to write jokes, you're trying to figure out why something is funny, and it just gets ex expanded into, sometimes you go into sketch writing or into longer form, but you're always trying to make something work, you know, having a beginning, middle, and end, so. Mark Farrell and Brent Butt, they're both like kind of road warrior comedians who've been out there doing it for a long time, and I'd been doing some comedy too. Like, I think it really helps you to kind of have gone through that, uh, uh, run the gauntlet of doing stand-up clubs and touring around in small towns for years. I think that makes you pretty tough. <laughs> makes you able to do comedy. We have to remember what works on stage doesn't often work uh, on a set. In fact, almost never, I think. In fact, if I hear the crew laughing, I know we're kind of in trouble. So I always know that on any show I've been on, when the crew laughs, when you look at it later, you're dead. I don't want people laughing on set. I mean, I like them laughing offset, kind of joking around. But at the takes, it just it usually means something got too big or too broad, and it's being laughed at for the wrong reasons. S-A-S-K-A-T-C-H-E-W-A-N. From where we're sitting, I am approximately, um, oh, I'd say 80 kilometers north, no, northwest. In northeast, sorry, it's northeast of here is where I grew up. I think Saskatchewan is actually a character in Corner Gas. Um, so I, I think um, Corner Gas has to happen in Saskatchewan. Why Saskatchewan? Well, you write what you know. And I grew up in Saskatchewan. I grew up in kind of a small town, not a town this small. Tisdale is my hometown. It's the hub of the Carrot River Valley. It's quite a beehive of activity. You know, I actually love it. I do. I, never, I know that uh, it's, it's a little bit of a haul some mornings to come out and drive home and everything like that, but I think it really does add to it. And I find looking out in the fields is the closest thing to water or movement that they have out here. So I kind of like it, actually. I love it. I love it. It's my third time here. And uh, 
I can't get enough of the sky. That's what I love, is being able to see the sky in like certain metropolitan cities in the east. You can't, it's, it's, and it really has an effect. So it's great to be out here and, and uh, I, I feel good. Saskatchewan, it was a huge culture shock last year when we got here. And I kind of wigged out a little bit. Because <laughs> there's like no mountains, no ocean. And it's like scuba. But there's times like you sit out here and when the wind blows, and like the, the field is going and you get that same effect that you get when you're sitting by the ocean, you know, it's just got kind of calming thing. And the sky is amazing and the thunderstorms, like I, I've never experienced a thunderstorm like that first week we were here. And I think that first week we had like three or four and they were like, like I actually was cowering like under the, like beside the bed, in between the bed and the wall, like, oh my God, a tornado's coming or something, we're all going to die. I'm actually quite settled into the groove here and I kind of like that there is sort of a stillness and that you can just sort of chill out and uh, take care of things that need to be taken care of that, you know, normally in a big city you get distracted. Oh, I love Saskatchewan. Yeah, it's fantastic. It's been uh, real, you know, you, I've been here for two summers now and it's been fantastic. There's a lot of great people here and, you know, they don't, I guess in the wintertime they don't have a lot to do except sit inside and break each other up, so. I love it. I, this, I hadn't been here. This was the first time I'd been in the province, and I think it is so beautiful. And now we're getting summer again a little bit. For the first time, it's been rainy, and people drive by, they're friendly. Oh, he just gave me the finger. <laughs> they're not very nice, no. Uh, he's an arrogant bat. But the boy, the boy is a good guy. I like him. I like him a lot. He's like my grandpa. He's just so good looking. It's just incredible. You know? I think he might be gay. Uh, well, he steals things. You know, he steals little things. Uh, the, the first, just a pen or a stapler uh, or your entire desk. But he basically is dishonest. He's a dishonest person. I don't think he can help it. I'm often on set in the top hat. Just a, it's a real power play, I'll admit. Oh, uh, well, no, this wouldn't be used, right? If I, no? Oh. Oh, he's good. Yeah, he's fine. No, he's good. Uh, yeah. I got this. Um, I don't like him. I think he's uh, arrogant, slow-witted, and I think that uh, if it wasn't for this show, he'd be a garbage man. The cast is asked not to call him by his first name, uh, to address him as Mr. Butt, and we're not allowed to look at him either. I actually haven't, <laughs> to be honest, I actually haven't um, spoken to him one on one, but I have I have talked to his people and had messages sent, you know, through people uh, from him, and he seems really nice. Why don't you fear me? Well, he's the uh, the 90s uh, the 90s Tommy Hunter. I mean, you can't get any bigger than that, really. What, what do I think of? Brent? You know what? You're gonna have to leave. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. This can't go on. You're, no, please, can you just leave? No, seriously, you guys. Sexy and uh, and obtuse. That's what I would say, Brent. But as sexy and obtuse because he's rounded to both ends. That's the definition of obtuse I was going for. Damn paparazzi. I was so pleased you were from Saskatchewan. You know, in this country, everybody, you know, yeah. you're from Saskatchewan. We hold dear everyone else from Saskatchewan. So I, I think he's actually uh, he's a very nice guy. And he's very funny, and I've never met anybody that's so quick with the wit. Like, it, not even, not even in the show. Like when we're when we go out for dinner or something, and like somebody will say something, and then ba bam, he's like that. Like he's quiet for a little bit, then ba bam, he comes up with this stuff, and I don't know how he comes up with it. It amazes me. You know, just a jolly, nice guy, basically. You know, he probably hates that I said jolly, but um, you know, just a very funny guy. I love Brant Bud. I love him. He is the number one best boss ever. Like, he's just amazing. Brent Bite is great. Uh, he doesn't steal things. Uh, he uh, is, is basically a good person, and not evil. He's so even. I mean, he does everything. He, he, he acts, he produces, and he's just got such a... He, well, he sort of looks like Buddha. Um, but, you know, I, but he's got such a... Well, well, 
I think his sense of humor is more than just about anything because I admire that a lot in people. But just the way he sees things. Just, he's got such a calm demeanor. And I have really fun with him when I'm working with him. Brent is, um, man, what do you say about him? He's a genius. I'm totally sucking up right now. No, but he is a genius. And it is, it is I mean, what he's accomplished and what he's doing and, and the, the hours that that man works. And uh, I, I just find it quite mind-boggling. I, I don't know how he does it, how he keeps it all together, and yet every day comes onto set, has a smile on his face, um, has a kind word to say to everyone, and I, I don't know if he sleeps. I don't know if he's human. I saw him do uh, a stand-up. Uh, he did, uh, you know, half an hour in Toronto, and uh, and I was crying. I was I was holding my sides. I was almost... It, it was He was hysterical, and I went, ah, no wonder. And plus, you know, you could tell in the writing, too, that... It's quite a brilliant cat. Yeah. A boy genius. Yeah. And cut! That is a cut! Very nice. I don't know the same things you don't know. I don't know. I just don't know. All I wanted was a good cup of coffee.